Welcome to the Mystic Media Channel. I'm your host, Rubino Rastaban, a.k.a. The Realist Astrologer. And I'm back with the free readings for the month of March. Now, I'm going to be doing a couple of them. Maybe I'll get to three. So this first one is for Gabrielle Skinner. Now, Gabrielle has been bugging me all month, um, waiting to see what I'm going to do these free readings. And I told him that, you know, I would try to get to his if I had a chance. So here you go, Gabrielle. So Gabrielle was born May 16th, 1983, and that makes him 34 years old. He's about to turn 35. His life path number is a six. So Gabrielle sent me this email, and I'm just going to read what he wrote. He said, I am 16 5, 1983, time of birth 9.40 a.m. Don't know where my life is going, everything going haywire. I've been taken serious advantage of from all types of people since I was a child to this very day. I have intentions of committing suicide and suicidal thoughts. I even cut myself many years ago. So I need to know where my life will really end up. For years, I am trying to find myself. Will I be somewhat financially stable because I am ha having serious problems with income? I also have physical ailments for more than seven years now. And what is a good compatible match for me? Is that possible to talk about that part? Please help me. Thanks. P.S. Continue to do your work by helping others. Well, thank you, Gabrielle. And I was just messing with you about you bugging me, but actually you were bugging me basically all month. So um, I'm doing you this solid right now by doing this free reading for you. So hopefully you'll find it insightful and enlightening. Now, um, you being a 16, that's a big part of you saying that you need to find yourself because 16s can often feel lost, can often feel like, you know, you don't know where you fit in in terms of the world. If you're not an artist, if you're not naturally born with, um, you know, God-given talents and skills, a lot of 16 people are. So you might have some God-given gifts and talents that you need to explore that can fit in with that 16 birth number. And then your life path is a six, and that is conducive to a lifestyle that is full of artistic expression but also where you need to connect with people. You need to have a vibrant social life and you need to be relationship oriented. So your question about, I need to know where my life will really end up. Now that's part of your problem. So that question right there points to you being a 16, but also it points to your South Node being in Sagittarius conjoined to your Neptune because that deals with you being um, having a past life where you really didn't have to think for yourself. So you could have had a past life where you were a servant of God because your south node is in the sixth house. It's conjoined to Neptune. So in a past life, you could have been like a faithful, pious servant of God and where you didn't have to really think for yourself because you were following scripture or you were following religious doctrine, what have you. Also, you mentioned um, about your physical ailments. That deals with you being a 16 because 16 are prone to physical ailments. Um, serious illnesses, maladies, all that stuff. So uh, the fact that your Neptune is conjoined to your south node, that ties in with your 16 birth number because 16 is in vibration to Neptune. So you might go through your whole life where you have some uh, significant challenges in the health department because your south node is in the sixth house and it's conjoined to Neptune. So what that can mean is that in another past life, you could have been an invalid. You could have been bedridden, always sick, and you had a bunch of servants around you taking care of you 24-7, day in and day out. So you really didn't have to work. You didn't have to really think for yourself again. And basically, you just left everything up to chance and up to fate because you really didn't have any ability to really um, make a mark upon the world as an individual. So that's why in this lifetime, your individual individuality is somewhat lost. And to add insult to injury, your Mars is in Queen comes to your Neptune. And that situation can produce a feeling like, you know, you're just lost. You don't know where you fit in in terms of the world. Um, you lack a strong sense of identity, a strong sense of self. So with that, you could easily be fooled. You could easily be duped. So this, again, goes along with yourself. No, conjoined to Neptune. In past lives, you really didn't have to think for yourself. You didn't have to exercise discernment. But in this lifetime, you do, per your North Node in Gemini. So 
another problem with that south node in uh Sagittarius in the sixth house conjoined to Neptune is um you also have this thing where you want to be considered special but not really where you have any merit. So again, that can deal with a past life where you were considered to be favored by God simply because you follow the doctrine, you adhere to the scriptures or whatever, you are a pious servant. So in this lifetime, you may feel like you should be rewarded for certain things or you feel like your life should go pretty easy because of past lives where things were just given to you because you were that faithful servant or whatever. So you could have even been a preacher in a past lifetime. And you know how preachers, they don't have to work because they get the offering and the tithes and all that stuff. And that's how they can live. So you're basically used to uh, past lives of being taken care of where you really didn't have to work hard for anything. But in this lifetime, you are going to have to work hard and you're going to have to uh, basically be where the common man is at. In past lives, you were basically either an invalid, you were sick, uh, like a sick and shut in. Or in another past life, you were like this very spiritual person. Oh, you were this person that was like a missionary or whatever like that. So you weren't dealing with the common average man. You were coming from a position of uh, re religious superiority. But in this lifetime, you got to lower yourself to the common man. You got to learn how to communicate. And more, most importantly, you have to learn how to exercise discernment when it comes to dealing with people. So you mentioned that one of the things you said was, I have been taken advantage of my whole life by all different types of people. So that deals with your Mars and Quincunx to Neptune. That can deal with not having a strong sense of self, like I said, not having a strong defense mechanism, not knowing how to practice self-preservation. And then what adds insult to injury is your Mars is also in Quincunx to your South Node in Sagittarius. With South Node Sagittarius people, a lot of times they are too idealistic and you want to get by just by doing all this wishing, hoping and praying. But that's not going to work in this lifetime because you got to put your mind to work. Anytime you let your mind slip, that's when you can easily get fooled, you can easily get bamboozled, scammed, conned, what have you. So you always have to question everything. You always have to look both ways before crossing the street because, like, you can actually get hit by a car or get into some car accident with that North Node in Gemini because you're not used to being attentive in this lifetime. So you have to be attentive in this lifetime. That's where everything, when you take your eye off the ball, that's when you can get hit hard. So you got to always check yourself. You can't get lazy in this lifetime, but it's very easy for you to be prone to laziness, which is why you're having this problem with income. Now you asked, will I be financially stable? And the question is, yes, but it's really up to you. Now you have a stellium in Taurus. Your son is in Taurus, but you also got Mars and Chiron and Mercury. So with all that Taurus energy, you have no choice but to be financially stable, but you are in your own way. So you need to get out of your own way and you need to follow a program or you need to follow the well, uh, the well beaten path that other people have taken to success. You can't really rely on your own devices in this lifetime. You really need to connect with people on a person to person, peer to peer level. And you really need to exchange ideas with people because in this lifetime, you need to admit that you don't know everything. But like I said, in past lifetimes, you thought you knew everything because you were going off of the word of God or what have you. Or you didn't know much at all because you were a sick and shut in type of person. So part of your problem is you got Mars conjoined to Chiron. Your son is conjoined to Chiron. You got this, this stellium and Chiron and it's all jammed up together. And that's part of your problem because that can cause you to become stuck in a rut because you're too stubborn. You don't want to change. You, you don't want to go against your own grain. But in this lifetime, you got to go against your own grain if you want to make some money. So you're going to have to make some money the good, old-fashioned, hard way. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is dealing with your Mercury in Taurus. It's making a sextile to your moon and also your ascendant in Cancer. So that can deal with uh, you working in food service, hotel, hospitality, landscaping, gardening, interior design, or where you're a house painter, furniture sales. What would actually be ideal for you is to get a job working um, in a resort or working on a cruise ship. And I say that because that way you'll have a sense of camaraderie, which you need in this lifetime. You'll also have a sense of fraternity because you'll always be working around the same type of people. You'll have this uh, 
like I said, this camaraderie together because y'all, you will be having similar experiences and it'll be in a like tightly knit setting, which is very much North Node and Gemini. You need to be more localized in this lifetime instead of out here. You need to be more here, but at the same time, be open minded to uh, different ideas, different perspectives, all of that. So because your North Node is in the 12th house and your moon is in the 12th house, too, that's why I'm mentioning like resort. Or like, you know, one of those hotel resorts and you live in Trinidad. So there's plenty of those around. And I'm pretty sure it'll be easy to get a job in that industry living in Trinidad. Also, working on a cruise ship, that's very much North Node conjoined to the moon in the 12th house. I'm sorry, not conjoined to the moon, but your North Node is in the 12th house. Let me see how close it is to your moon. Hold on. Yeah, it's not conjoined to your moon, but... Both your North Node and your Moon is in the 12th house. Your Moon is conjoined to Venus in Cancer in the 12th. That's good for working at like a hotel resort or even on a cruise ship. And I think cruise ship would be very advantageous for you because that way it will teach you self-discipline and you will get that sense of fraternity, camaraderie, because like I said, you'll be in that close-knit setting with a bunch of your peers and you'll be able to learn from them and you'll be able to become more open-minded. So also a benefit to working on a cruise ship is you can't quit. If you get tired of working, you know, a shift or whatever like that, you just can't just quit because you're at sea. You're on a cruise ship. Like there's nothing you can really do. And you do need self-discipline in this lifetime because it's severely lacking. So I suggest those type of jobs. Um, service, jobs in the service sector would be really good for you because that's what you need with that 12 house north note. You need to learn how to serve. With the 12th house, you have two options, either to serve or to suffer. Anything else is just going to be a hot mess. Now, um, you asked what is a good compatible match for you. Now, before I get into that, I'll just say you shouldn't be thinking about getting with anybody right now until you get your uh, act together, until you get your life together, until you know who you really are, until you know what you really want, and until you know where you're headed in life. If you don't know all that, then any type of person you get with is not going to work out. So I strongly advise you to leave people alone until you really get a strong sense of who you are and you get some money in your pocket. You start working a job, you continue to work that job for years, you accumulate money that way, the good old-fashioned way, and that way you can have financial security and you can be financially stable. It's not going to really happen any other way. And you need to get with a company, like I said, where... You can follow the well-beaten path to success. And working on a cruise ship or in a hotel resort is one of those ways because, you know, they have that well-beaten path to success in terms of hotel management. And you could just follow that and you could work your way up into a management, a management position eventually. But um, I can't say there's enough food service, hotel management, even like uh, landscaping, interior design, like you're painting um, houses and stuff for people. That's up your alley because you need to learn how to, number one, uh, use your hands in, in the course of making money and doing uh, work. But you also need to learn how to be down with the common people, not be up here, be down here where everybody else is at. And to realize that you're not special just because you will be special because of what you can do and the skills that you accumulate and how you are able to serve people. Those are the ways in which you will be special. So there's two signs that would be good for you, but you got to be careful with these two signs because it's not like you could just get with um, this sign regardless of the birth date and think everything's going to work out. So Virgo is good for you, but Virgo in terms of the late uh, degrees of Virgo. So if they were born between the 15th and the 22nd of September, that's a good idea. Stay away from Virgos that are born in August. And that, you know, have, are born in the, where you, their son ends up in the early degrees because that's going to conflict with your, uh, Jupiter and Uranus in Sagittarius. And also, uh, let me see. Something else. But see, your situation is hella tricky because if, even if you get with a Virgo in the late degrees, their son is still going to square your nodes. So even that's not going to be a really good idea. So, but Virgo, take your chances with that. I mean, not take, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Because like I said, even if, whether you do it in the early part of Virgo season or the latter part of Virgo season, you're going to run into some problems. But 
it would be more advantageous. I don't know. Like that's okay. Scratch Virgo. I don't like the way that sounds. Forget what I said about Virgo. Pisces. Pisces is a, a decent match for you. That's if they are born in the latter degrees of Pisces, the latter part of Pisces season. So between March 12th approximately and March 20th would be good for a person with their son in Pisces. But again, I can't stress this enough. I wouldn't be uh, thinking about dating anybody until you get your own act together, until you understand who you really are as a person and where you're going in life. And when it comes to your purpose, nobody could really tell you what your purpose is. It has to come from within. I can help show you the way. I can give you some ideas. But you really got to determine um, what your purpose is from your heart. So hopefully you found this enlightening. Let me know what you think. You could post uh, questions in the comments section or you could just send me an email. You already have my email address. So uh, hopefully uh, you found this enlightening. Like I said, if anybody would like a reading, just go to my website at Rabina.com. Peace and many blessings. And I'll be back soon with the next free reading.